sentencing, uh, Judge Lopez, could you talk a little bit about your philosophy of sentencing? Because I think it's important for the committee to hear more fully how you approach what I think is mo one of the most important responsibilities of a judge. Thank you, Senator, for that question. Uh, I practice extensively as a federal prosecutor, so I'm quite familiar with the federal sentencing system. The state of Maine sentencing system that I now work under um, is quite different. We don't have sentencing guidelines. Instead, in the state of Maine, we have a three-part uh, methodology that we are required by statute to follow. In every case, I look carefully at the factual record. Uh, I make factual findings um, as dictated by the evidence before me, and then I follow the three-part sentencing methodology. The third part of that methodology requires the court to consider whether to suspend a portion of the sentence so that the defendant can be on probation conditions. The main system does not have supervised release for most crimes the way that the federal system does, and so the only way to place an offender on probation conditions after release and to supervise them in the community is to suspend a portion of the sentence, and that happens, uh, in my experience, in the majority of main cases. Uh, in every case, I listen carefully to the parties, to the victims, if it's a crime involving victims. Uh, and in many cases, I have imposed sentences that the state has asked for. Um, and it, I, I view each case um, on its own and impose a sentence that is uh, dictated by the evidence and the statutory factors. And I think that's important. You try to individualize a sentence. Uh, I've been a prosecutor. Uh, U.S. Attorney and Attorney General. And sentencing has in part, justifiably, a punishment aspect. Society demands that there be some suffering on the part of people who commit a crime. That's in part why we deprive them of their freedom. But it also is supposed to have some corrective effect on the individual, it used to be called rehabilitative. And unfortunately, all too often, our prisons fail to provide either job skills or education or health care in many different ways. As you look at an individual, is the factual background that you consider partly whether that person is going to commit another crime or become a productive member of society? Senator, that's something I'm required to consider under the statutory factors set forth by Maine law, uh, the individual history and characteristics of the defendant, including any criminal history, uh, any past uh, failures on probation, um, and the prospects for rehabilitation, and then, of course, the nature and circumstances of the offense. And so in each case, I consider all of those factors as I'm required to by Maine law. Thank you. I really appreciate that very thoughtful answer to a question that I think becomes embroiled in the politics of the moment, but really faces this committee in the way that we make laws and faces judges literally every day in courtrooms all around the country, in state courts as well as federal courts. Uh, I really appreciate both of your service to our country. Part of your service is appearing before this committee. Not pleasant, not fair. Welcome to our world. <laughs> and I want to thank you and commend you for being here to participate in the very constructive and thoughtful way that you have done. Uh, I would invite either of you, feel no pressure to do so, to add any comments that perhaps you haven't been able to conclude because you've been interrupted? If you want to say something in addition to explain, provide further answers, please use the balance of my time to do so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Blumenthal. Uh, Senator Kennedy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 